The Bears have added to their offensive line, and I'm not talking about Darnell Wright. Sports Talk Chicago. Here with Johnson Galore. Great to have you all here with us on this beautiful evening. The Bears have a new offensive lineman, Roy Mbedeka. He's come over from the Giants. He's a national player from Nigeria. And guess what? He may actually help out the Bears' offensive line more than somebody like Darnell Wright or other players on this roster. Mbedeka is a freak of nature, 6'8", 320 pounds, an undrafted signee from Ryan Poles. And here's a quote from a scout about Embedica. Quote, he is big, strong, physical, extremely intelligent, very athletic. He's built to play offensive tackle in the league. In fact, he reminds me quite a bit of a former Giants teammate and Kareem McKenzie. He has the same temperament. He's very smart, but he's a very athletic player. Roy Embedica is now a Chicago Bear, and he will be given an opportunity to compete on the offensive line and maybe even start come week one for Ryan Poles. Mbedek is a great athlete with plenty of upside, a guy with such big peripherals, 320 pounds, six foot eight. somebody who has not played an NFL snap on the Giants' active roster and practice squad last year but didn't really get an opportunity. So Ryan Pulls snipes in, gets him for a minimal deal, and now has a chance to turn him into who he wants. According to this scouting report from SportsMockery.com, he has a lot of technical issues, which is part of the reason why he didn't get a chance to play much last year. Uh, his pass protection needs tons of work, and like many taller tackles, he struggles with keeping his pad level down, also has to work on his temperament, and plays a little bit too passive. Uh, my take on the signing is this. You have absolutely nothing to lose if you're the Bears and Ryan Poles here. Nothing. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? This is some undrafted free agent in which you have very little money and resources invested in. This isn't Darnell Wright. Everyone's going to be focused on Darnell Wright. Wondering how good he's going to be and wondering whether or not Ryan Poles missed the boat or actually hit it big with somebody like him in that first round pick. This is a way different situation. Little resources, little money, little fanfare. Really, this is a very small report. And then it could turn into a big, big investment and a big time situation for Ryan Poles and company. And Betica is a freak of nature. He has the stature and, according to some, has the attitude to really play offensive line ball in the NFL. Why he didn't play much last year is somewhat unknown. We, we see some technical issues here, but at the end of the day, the question is, will he get an opportunity with the Bears? Well, Braxton Jones isn't holding on to his spot too well. There were a lot of you who came on with us after we did our uh, NFL draft show and talked about what the Bears still need. A lot of you said, why is Braxton Jones at this point still having an opportunity to start after a tougher rookie year? Well, this could be a situation in which Embedica takes over. Jack Sanborn was undrafted. He was starting linebacker last year. Led the Bears in tackles in the second half of the season. And this year, deservedly so, is going to be starting at the linebacker position again. Who's to say Embedica can't do the same thing and rise up from the bottom to the top? Don't you love those stories? I know I do. It's exciting to see somebody with little fanfare, somebody whom no one's really talking about, get this opportunity and get, a, and get a chance to succeed. Training camp's going to mean everything for Embedek, and my guess is he's going to get a lot of snaps in training camp and a lot of snaps in the preseason. Might be two games, but we might see him on the field at all times. I always go back to this when people tell me who cares about undrafted signings. There's a reason why somebody signed in football. Whether you're a first-round pick, whether you're an undrafted free agent signing who might be on the practice squad for the rest of his career, there's a reason why you were signed. You don't just get signed and picked up. Very rarely does that happen. Unless you know somebody or you're the kid of a, uh, kid of a coach, something along those lines. But usually, there's a reason why you're signed. There's a reason why you're brought in. The Bears need offensive line depth, no matter what. Even if Embedica doesn't play and sits on the practice squad all year in Lake Forest, he may get called up eventually. May get an opportunity to play. Maybe somebody gets hurt. Maybe there's poor performance. And he needs to come on in and clean up the mess that's been left over from Braxton Jones. <laughs> you never know. It's always smart, no matter what, to line your pockets with extra of something. The Bears have enough money to spend, and this is not a break-the-bank signing at all. There's an opportunity here to get an insurance policy and yet have somebody who's essentially a rookie. He may not be a rookie in the NFL's eyes. He was on the Giants roster all year last year, playing the preseason, 
but he's never played a real in-game snap yet. Not once. And guess what? The Bears have been eating the offensive line. And if the Bears are going to do this right, which I think they will, and they play it based on merit during training camp, he may end up getting a spot. He's been gifted an opportunity from Ryan Poles. Now it's up to him to earn it. That's exciting. It's going to be fun to watch. And it's always one of those moments where you're like, I knew him when. We are covering this signing today in early May. And Benica could be a superstar by November. Never know. I will say this. According to the scouting report, and according to what I've seen, has the athleticism, has the raw talent, maybe not polished talent, but certainly raw talent. He knows how to play football. He knows how to block. Freak in nature. Some NFL experience, albeit practice squad and preseason, but he's been on an NFL roster. And what do you have to lose? Even if you play him week four, week five with Braxton Jones, have him replace Braxton Jones, what do you have to lose? What, what What's the worst that's going to happen? Okay, he gives up 20 sacks or something, and you, you bench him again. There is little money invested in him. Little to none. There's no fanfare. There's no excitement. There's nothing. It's a blip on the radar to most people. And yet, he could turn into, potentially, a full-time starter on this team. I've always knocked the Bears in the past for having such a mishmashed offensive line, an offensive line that had so many non-top prospects, and that's why it was so bad. Well, here's a case where you don't have to be a top prospect to get an opportunity to succeed. Don't know Wright's going to get all the opportunities in the world, rightfully so. And if he doesn't hit, it's going to be a big failure for Ryan Poles. Somebody like Embedica, it's going to be completely different. He may not get as many given opportunities because there's no fan for around him. But if he can earn a spot, he'll be there for life. The Bears are so offensive line hungry that they need this. They do. Even as a piece of depth, even if he never sees the field, it's exciting And it's necessary for them. They need somebody there in the background to at least get Braxton Jones a little bit worried, a little bit scared, or anybody else for that matter. Darn all right, even, theoretically. Maybe Wright turns into a bus and you have Embedica right there. Whatever the case may be, there's a reason why the Bears acquired him. There's a reason why Ryan Pulse said, from the beginning, we're going to build through the trenches. He's doing just that. I love the investment in offensive line. May not be big, may not be exciting or glamorous to many people, but this is such a low-budget, under-the-radar signing that could turn into something really huge. And no one's talking about it. This offensive line is so starved for talent. And we've talked about it for years and years. If you followed the Bears from Rex Grossman, Jake Cutler, to now, it's Trubisky, now Justin Fields getting sacked seven times in his debut. There's always been a need for offensive line help. And the Bears, for some reason, have never gotten it right. It's always been random guys, plug and play, one year here, one year there, a couple of draft picks who never work out. This year specifically, there's been a clear focus on offensive line help. Darnell Wright sent a message right away. The Bears move back. They don't take Jalen Carter. They pick up Darnell Wright, who did not allow a sack and only allowed eight pressures during the college season in 2022. And even this signing, usually when you see undrafted signings, it's a running back, wide receiver, somebody who you know is probably never going to play. This is an offensive lineman who's 6'8", 330 pounds. This is somebody who's been on an NFL roster before, who has international intrigue, not just national intrigue, international intrigue, and who has the opportunity, if he plays his cards right and works hard and impresses people, to actually get time to play. There's a lot more to this signing than what it looks to be. Everybody else, oh, some undrafted guy, who cares, move on to the next player. When do OTA start? I'm saying we should at least consider what he may bring to the table. And if I'm wrong, look like an idiot, fine. But you know what? I'd rather be a little bit more optimistic knowing this is a huge offensive line man who has some experience, huge signing, and he could make waves for the Bears in 2023. That's something that we all ought to think about 
when we look at this shining for the Bears. Thank you all for watching here on Sports Talk Chicago. Appreciate the like. Oh. Thank you all for watching here on Sports Talk Chicago. Appreciate you tuning in. Subscribe to the channel at Sports Talk Chicago. Follow us all over the place, including Instagram now at Sports Talk Chicago, too. Thanks for watching.